So we are in Proverbs chapter 7, follows up from um, Proverbs chapter 6, where um, Solomon uh, was warning against the folly, and we look at how we need to discipline ourselves, and we look at the example of the ant who doesn't have a lead, who do not have a leader, but do their work on time and do what they need to do. They discipline themselves to, to work, they discipline themselves to, to store food, they discipline so saving, they discipline themselves to do what they need to do on time. So today we're looking at Proverbs chapter 7 and it warns the men against um, immoral women. So it, the titles here on this says what the wiles of a harlot. <laughs> That's one title. Another one says warning against the adulteress and the other one says another warning about immoral women so let us dive in and see what the lord has for us this morning my son it says in verse one keep my words and store up the command uh, my commands within you keep my commands and you will live guard my teachings as the apple of your eye bind them to your fingers write them on the tablet of your heart say Say to wisdom, you are my sister. And call understanding your kinsman. Understanding is revelation. Understanding is insight. And wisdom is action. What do you do? So they will keep you from the adulteress, from the wayward wife with her seductive words. So the first few verse here is telling uh, young men, to be careful, to, 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 to listen to wisdom, to listen to advice, to keep the words. Uh, um, here is uh, um, uh, in Psalm 119, it says, Your word I have hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. So if we, are, if we keep the word of God, he will remind us, the Holy Spirit will bring us, uh, to memory the, the words uh, of God. He will keep us safe. He will, he will warn us of the, 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 the mistakes that we're about to dive into. So keep focusing on God and his word and he, it will keep you from sin. From uh, it's, it, it, This is warning against the seductress. It says that uh, it's a warning against uh, the, uh, oh, not only the seductress, it's warning against sin in general because it is not only women who entice men. It could be alcohol, it could be uh, 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 material things that lead you to steal or to cheat. So it is or greed or lying or other things that may entice you from, from the Lord. So anything that pulls us away from God, that we put first place in his, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, from, uh, instead of God, will pull us into sin. So he is, uh, God is warning here against the adulterous woman. So he says here from verse 6, he says, At the window of my house, I looked out through the lattice. I saw among the simple... <laughs> That I noticed among the young men a youth who lacked judgment. Now, sometimes <laughs> we think that it's the young people who lack judgment, but we know of older people who have fallen prey to this. It's not about age, it's about lack of maturity, a lack of wisdom will pull you to the seductress. He was going down the street near her corner, walking along the direction of her house. At twilight, as the day was fading, as the dark of night set in. So here we see that this young man is walking towards the house of the adulteress. What? At what time? In the evening, when places are getting dark. A lot of sin happens in the dark. A lot of these uh, 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 um, um, hidden things happen in the dark. So he was walking towards the, the house of, of, of the uh, of the adulteress, of the seductress, and the sin was pulling him. Then, it verse 10 says, then out came a woman to meet him, dressed like a prostitute with crafty intent. She is loud and defiant. Her feet never stay at home. Now in the street, now in the squares, at every corner she lurks. She took hold of him and kissed him with a brazen face. She said, I have fellowship offerings at home. Today I fulfilled my vows. So come out 
to I came out to meet you. I looked for you and found you. I have covered my bed with colored linens from Egypt. I have perfumed my bed my, with myrrh, alloys, and cinnamon. Come, let us drink it of love till morning. Let's enjoy ourselves with love. My husband is not at home. He has gone on a long journey. He took his purse filled with money and will not be home till full moon. We just read to the end and then we comment accordingly. With persuasive words, she led him astray. She seduced him with her smooth talk. All at once, he followed her like an ox going to the slaughter, like a deer stepping into a noose, till an arrow pierces his liver, like a bird darting into a snare, little knowing it will cost him his life. Now then, my sons, listen to me. Pay attention to what I say. Do not let your heart turn to her ways and stray into her paths. Many are the victims she has brought down. Her slain, oh, many are the victims she has brought down. Her slain are a mighty throng. Her house is a highway to the grave, leading down to the uh, chambers of death. So this is quite a stern warning that Solomon is giving to his son here and to us because he's telling us that be careful of the seductress or the seducer. <laughs> These days it is not only the men who cheat, women also cheat and they go after and, 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 and married women sleep around. So Oh, and, and, and married men sleep around. So he's warning uh, 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 his son to be careful. And he, here it describes the, 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 the appearance of the seductress and what she does. The seductress is very loud. She's rebellious. She's never at home. She's in the market square. She's everywhere. She dresses beautifully and seductively like a harlot. So, I don't know, maybe wear, it, wear skimpy things. They are bold and they walk the streets. They're not scared of, uh, of, 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 of telling you who they are. Today we see all kinds of things on online. People saying that, oh, I love one night stands. I sleep with whoever I want. Sex is just casual. And they will take the first step to entice men. So we know of cases where women have, uh, have gone on purpose and seduced somebody's husband. They target you, they see you, they target you, and they make everything possible to get you so if you are someone who lacks wisdom like you said in the beginning here people who lack wisdom are easily enticed into these things so sin looks beautiful sin looks attractive and the enemy will entice you with beautiful things he will put you dangle the things that you crave for if you're somebody who are very materialistic you will dangle material things in front of you if you're somebody who, who, is, uh, who loves drinking, you will dangle alcohol in front of you. If you're somebody who loves, loves watching uh, pornography, you will dangle pornography in front of you. So, sin looks uh, attractive and will entice you. The, 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 the seductress has everything. She has put her makeup on, she's put perfumes, she's cleaned the house, she's put new sheets on, soft uh, uh, Egyptian cotton on her bed. So, she prepares the place as enticingly as possible that when you see you're just like ooh, let me just come and lie here this looks so soft and nice now it gives you a false sense of safety it says here that she said okay I've done my uh, 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 fellowship offering my husband has gone away he's taken a lot of money he's not gonna come back soon so you have this se false sense of security that okay I can just go it's only today maybe I'll not come back again tomorrow and she lures you in and you <laughs> you go in because you think that okay nobody's gonna see me nobody's gonna know but Solomon who was speaking was standing on his window uh, uh, at his window and he saw the young man going to this woman so we can nobody can hide anything because even though you may think that it's just the two of you she she can speak he can speak 
Neighbors can speak. So we should not always think that we can hide these things. Somebody sees you. And if nobody on this earth sees you, God sees you. So there is nowhere to run. There is nowhere to hide. So the young man is described in this chapter as an ox being led to the slaughter. So the person who is being pulled into this uh, kind of sin is like an ox. Like you have no control. You are being controlled by somebody else. Or you are being controlled by your desires and your appetites. The things that uh, you, you lack discipline. And so you cannot say no to the to, to, to the Lord. So it's like you have no control. You have no power over what is going to happen to you. You cannot resist the temptation. And, and you're pulled by your un uncontrollable appetites. So lack of discipline will lead you to, into this kind of sin. And sin always looks beautiful. Uh, as I, like I said, you think that you'll not get caught. But sometimes you make it. Uh, 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 but it always leads to death. No matter what, it says in, in, in Romans that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So, you can fall into this sexual sin and have physical consequences. Contract a, a, a sexually transmitted disease, which may not be curable, like AIDS. Or you can get murdered. How many times have we seen people... Uh, heard in the news about people who were enticed uh, on on these dating sites and were murdered. You may maybe the end of your marriage, divorce, relationships and lives are destroyed. Your children's lives are destroyed. The people around you, your whole family is destroyed because even when you're married, you're not just in, uh, married to that one person. You are relating to other people in the family, and so the relationships between those people too are potentially destroyed because of what lack of discipline not listening to the word so stay clear of the adulteress or the adulterer or any person who entice you to do things that are not right at the start of this chapter god uh, said stay in the word listen to my words and store up my commands in your heart if we hide God's word in our heart, it would lead us. His word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. If we stay doing the right thing, we will not fall into the wrong thing. So idleness also causes all to fall into wrong thing, wrong things. So it is important to stay doing the right thing. Stay focused. What are your goals? If you do not have goals, you your hand will, you'll be idle because. You will not be aiming at anything. And so anything that comes your way, you will fall into it. So um, Solomon said here that do not stray into her path. Which means that sometimes you may fall into these things by accident. Maybe you are in the wrong place at the wrong time. Or even in the right place at the wrong time. So it's as easy as staying in your house, being on your computer, and you click on the link, suddenly pornography is in front of you. Suddenly, there's this person chatting uh, to you that you do not know. And then they start chatting to you and you get interested and you say, okay, let me just listen to what they're saying. So when we're idle, we can easily fall prey. So sin uh, uh, gets us in a moment of weakness. So you may be having issues at home and you find yourself in a bar and you start talking to somebody and then you just, because they're listening to you and they telling you what you want to hear, you fall into the sin. Or you go at work, you, you sharing with your colleagues, and then you fall, uh, 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 you have other, uh, you, you start sharing more than you should, and they tell you what you want to hear, and there you go. So sin gets us uh, during a moment, uh, at a moment of weakness. When we're in the wrong place, or we're tired, or when we have financial worries, so other kinds of worries, and we want to hear sweet talk in our ears. This is what usually gets us. And all slain, as we can see, we see in the last few chapters, all the people who were caught up in this were not weak people. Were not people who, who, who you think, okay, is yeah, that one can easily fall into sin because one, or one of one thing or another. But these were mighty men, it says here. How many times have we heard of people, head of states, preachers, uh, um, leaders of companies who have fallen into this kind of sin. 
So it, it doesn't matter who you are. It only matters how disciplined you are. So whether you're a head of state or a pauper, everybody can be enticed into this kind of sin. Men, women alike, we can, we can all be enticed into this kind of sin. Because we are all human beings and we all have certain needs that need to be met. And when we're not getting our needs met in one place, we'll try and go and find the needs and we'll go and meet the needs somewhere else. Whether in the right way or the wrong way. Sometimes we do the things that we do just to get our needs met. And so we may go in there thinking that, okay, I'm not getting what I'm supposed to be getting at home. I'm going to go get it outside there. But sin is sin. Irrespective of what your reasons were of going into it, you have still fallen prey. And so this has this, this kind of sin has destroyed uh, livelihoods, destroyed families, destroyed companies, destroyed a lot of things. So no good thing can come from going to the adulteress. It says in the last few verses, no good thing can uh, 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 come from, from going there. It always leads to death. And even if you are not caught, even if you, you, you succeed in deceiving everybody around you, we will still die one day. We die bit by bit. Emotionally, we, are, we deaden ourselves to the people around us. Emotionally, we withdraw from the people we are supposed to be close to. And we harden our hearts, slowly, slowly, our hearts are hardened and we shut them out. And you're in this full-blown scene, and then you think that you are having the best time of your life until things come crashing down and you start regretting. What have I done? So when we're in the midst of it, it feels like we're on top of the world. But eventually, our hearts get broken. There's always consequences. People may look on the outside as if everything is rosy. Everything, they're enjoying uh, where they are, deceiving, lying, cheating. They, in, they look like they're enjoying it. But when they go back and stay all by themselves, when they look at themselves in the mirror, they do not see the person they're cheating on. You see your own reflection. And as such, you have a reckoning to do with yourself. And lying and cheating is not about the person who is being cheated on. It's about you and your appetites and your decisions and your lack of discipline. So you, nobody can uh, make another person do what they don't want to do. Unless you're tied and the gun is put on your head, nobody can make you do anything that you do not want to do. If you decide that you're going to fall into this woman's, uh, 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 or into the adulterer or the adulteress's lap, it is a choice that you have made. And nobody else, irrespective of what the, your situation is, makes you do these things. We consciously choose to do these things. So there are always consequences, even if they are not visible to other people. So today, warning against the adult, falling into the hands of the adulterer or the adulteress. We, we, men and women alike can be the enticers. They can be the ones pulling us uh, in our moment of weakness or we can purposefully choose to go and do these things. However it is that we fall into these uh, situations, let us take a look at ourselves. Let us reflect on our, our life. If that's the lifestyle you want to live, it's up to you. If it's not the right thing for you to be doing, then you confess, you repent, and turn from your wicked ways. Turn from that life. Withdraw from that life. It doesn't matter whether things have been destroyed or not, but for your own uh, sanity, for your own well-being, for your own uh, 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 mental health, you need to turn around. So the relationships may not be repaired, but you will repair yourself. You will get healing. And you can start afresh with a new start, with new uh, 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 um, discipline, with you learn new, new new skills to be able to stay right where you're supposed to be. So I hope that <laughs> these 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 first few proverbs are all just all about falling into the wrong hands, falling into sin, being uh, 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 um, not lacking discipline really. So it is important that we make right decisions. And we can only make right decisions if we have the right information and the right knowledge. And so, who is your source of knowledge? Where do you get your, 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 your wisdom from? Where do you get advice from? Find people who, who 
have overcome the kind of struggles that you are struggling with get a mentor have an accountability partner so that you are surrounding yourself with people who want the best for you and who will hold you accountable if you're trying to go the wrong way that is the kind of uh, uh, those are the kind of people that we want in our life we don't want people in our lives who if we're going wrong they say oh it's all right nothing will happen to you it's all right we can just hide this thing it is just the two of us who will know nobody is going to know about it no surround yourself with people who can hold you accountable who if they see you doing something wrong i've got friends in my life who, who if i come to them and say i'm struggling with this i'm struggling with that and i say that i've done this or done that that is not right they will tell me straight to my face that aqua that wasn't right you shouldn't have done that i may not want to hear it but because i have allowed them that uh, uh, um, right i've given them that right to be able to speak into my life to hold me accountable then even when i do not like it i have to receive the message think about it and then make uh, the, uh, the necessary adjustments sometimes i choose to stay in my my, my my wrongdoing like everybody else and sometimes i reflect and do the right thing so we all can fall into these temptations and so let us be aware that these things are in front of us and that we can choose right so let's learn to stay in the world so that we can discipline uh, discipline ourselves and the holy spirit can lead and guide us and help us bible says that no temptation has come to you that has not been in front of any other person or that you cannot overcome so there is no new thing under the earth so solomon lived life did everything and he found that what has been will be and will always be this is not a new scene even in the time of abraham isaac and jacob this was happening today it is happening it will always happen but it's up to us to choose which life we want to live and how uh, 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 whether we want to be disciplined or indisciplined so thank you for listening